That's my charging port. That's a piece of black duct tape. The reason I have it on there is so the dirt doesn't get in there. And I've also heard about XRs just dying suddenly. People ride them in a bit of rain or through a, something that's wet. That's a, if memory serves, I think it was 62.7 volts on the positive terminal of the XFR, uh, the XR pin. XFR, XLR, I can't remember. Anyways, 62.7 volts. You get a drop of water between those two pins. There's a good chance you're ground shorting. And if you ground short, the electronics in these are basically self-balancing Arduino robots on the head, the brain. If you get water on that pin, you're probably going to destroy your board. It'll short something out. So it's so, so, so easy to just cover it with a piece of duct tape. I usually use two pieces of duct tape. I have a second one because if I end up in heavy rain, I cover the battery or the uh, power button too. I don't know that it's sealed any better. I don't know that it's not, but I do know that if you get water on a 62.7 volt battery, if you're at full charge, something's gonna die. Uh, other things to be aware of is that if you're riding in a lot of water or a lot of moisture, rain and stuff, you've heard of the torpedo boards. This one I actually named Land Torpedo despite the fact it's never done that to me. But uh, the wood can swell. And if the wood swells, Guess what happens to the sensors on the front? They get depressed, they're pushed down. So that means that right now my board would want to go that way because it thinks that you're on it and it's leaning. It doesn't know you're not. So just be aware of that. Uh, I've probably touched on this and other things too, but since I'm making a video here, oh yeah, I really recommend regripping the back too. Fuck that, like I don't know why they, you guys have their one wheels and they have it like, the original stuff that doesn't have any grip here. That's where you want to stand. You want to grip that fucking thing. So rip that shitty grip tape that they supply off and put some good grip tape on. Uh, I personally like riding without a fender because I like the sound of the tire and I actually come to know the sound of the tire on gravel and dirt and trails and even in grass. I can almost, I don't know how to explain it. You can almost hear when it's about to do something weird and you can kind of hear the motor working better. If you're really careful when you're going down hills and stuff, you can hear the point where it's regenerating. You can hear when the thing is not giving you power but actually charging itself. Oh yeah, I also cover the bottom of my board here with duct tape and there's uh, fiberglass tape under there, like basically fiber patch stuff. So if it gets smashed and this is hot glue because I chunked a root, or rock or something and broke the handle a little while ago. That was cheaper than a new bumper. <laughs> but they're fucking tanks. You all know it. They're awesome. So here's my foot stance. I have mentioned this in many videos. Some people I see riding with their foot way back here. This seems like a nightmare to me. And way up here. This is a fulcrum. So just like a teeter-totter. Imagine if you gave a kid a teeter-totter and you stood like this on it. It wouldn't be very fun, right? Because you're not going to get very much teetering going on. It's hardly even worth it. But considering that you're standing on this fulcrum, you want to be able to have your feet in a place that is responsive and close to the wheel where the balance is centered. The only disadvantage of this I've found, this stance, and if you want to go like with your foot out more, you can, but I like to personally have it where... Sorry. I can feel sort of the edge of the board almost under the ball of my toe, sort of like where my toes curl, you know? The reason is, is because that is that edge. Sorry. I'm moving slow, so bear with me. See that edge? I can stand right on it and push down if I need the board to, if I need the board to lean that way. It's also how I do flips. And my front foot generally is in this stance where I can stand just on my toes and still be depressing the sensors. Something to note is that if you're going at speed, 
don't take me quote on this, but I'm pretty sure you can be standing on only one sensor if you're going fast. Because I know I've gone off rocks and stuff, and then looked down and saw that my foot was, you know, not really anywhere in there. I also regripped the front. That's not as hard as you'd think, but you got to be really careful to not pry up the sensor pad. And this stance here is pretty much my go-to. It's what I use. I'm at a plus or point two stance. Lean back is my standard, but I change that depending on slopes. And I'm gonna try to get it on video. I've got you know on video for a friend's cam, but he is on a vacation right now, and I'm I think he's back in two weeks, three weeks. Anyways, I have a heel flip. I call it a heel flip in this case on uh, video. He caught me doing it. So just bear with me here because this isn't going to be that. Again, I, I can't do them all the time. I get lucky, I guess. So I've never tried them on the trail. But uh, in a park with some grass and a slope, they're fun. And if you have a, a hill that's sloped up, you can ride into it heel side. And with this stance, you can flip the board both toe by shifting your foot over like so. And just... Imagine that was on a hill, right? And the hill is, in that case, that way. The board is gonna flip over on itself. And I don't know if I would call it a heel flip or a kick flip. I tend to call them berm rolls because it seems like a more accurate name. But the board rolls over on itself and you can land on it again, boom. It takes a lot of practice. And uh, there's definitely some bailing involved. So that I don't wear a helmet a lot, but I definitely wear a helmet doing that. And I'm also pretty prepared to eat shit if I have to. But I found even easier, even easier, I'm gonna go onto the grass here for it. I found it even easier to move your stance over a bit and to, again, bad example, because I'm not on a hill right now. But you can launch the board onto that edge. And also notice, I was going this way. So I'm pretty sure, again, this is when I wish I had two one wheels because I wouldn't be so worried about destroying this one. I really don't want to smash the brain into things hard and the sensors and all that shit, or the battery. But when you do that, depending on where your feet are, the board, will flip thusly. As it rolls down the hill. And if it keeps going, it'll revert. And you land on it going the other way. The board is going the other way, you're going the same way. So yeah, there's a trick. Like I say, I do have some video of that. I gotta get it back to my buddy and I haven't really been practicing it too much lately, so I might try to do it a couple times today or this week. But for now, I'm more just focusing on how awesome it is to be out on my one wheel. It's like about 30 degrees out right now. Quiet as hell. I came from came from way up there. Way up there. Like I way up there. And I've got 86% charge because slight downgrade most of the way. So anyways, ride safe, have fun, and uh, hopefully hopefully you guys have taken some, uh, some advice or knowledge from this. Oh yeah, the only fault I've found to this stance, really, personally I like it a lot, is that if you hit rocks and you're going fast and you get bounced a little bit, there's a chance that your foot connects the wheel and since the wheels running forward it goes like this Woo! that is uh, of all the times I've crashed on the one wheel definitely the worst bail I've had but uh, I don't like riding a fender I think I mentioned that earlier so I'm just gonna cut the video now because we're at nine minutes and you guys have listened to me ramble for quite some time so uh, thanks for joining me here in this lovely park where nobody ever seems to be. It's awesome.